So I want to start off with sharing a story. It's about a couple who grew up in Vietnam. The man's name is Bon. He was a country boy who grew up in a big family. The woman's name is Kim. She grew up in the city in the heart of Saigon. City boy, or city girl meets a country boy, and they fall in love. And they would eventually get married, fall in love, and have children. But their, their story is unique in the sense that their country was in a state of war. The North and South were divided. Bon later joined the Navy, and he would fight with the US troops. And as we know how the Vietnam War ended, they lost. The day the war ended, Bon was captured into a labor camp by the communist. There he would remain for three years. And the day he was released, he fled with his wife Kim, his daughter Tram, on a fishing boat from Vietnam to Malaysia with many other families. They would take shelter and refuge there. And there they would wait patiently for eight months until they got the good news from two families in Rochester, New York, that they would sponsor them and help them start their lives all over again. I'm proud to say that this couple are my parents. They have a courageous journey of inspiration. They started their lives all over again and left with nothing but the clothes that they had on their back. They embraced a new culture, a new language, a new life for their family. And so they instilled in me this grit and this ambition and this tenacity to always dream big to always trust in every experience, no matter how scary the circumstances are. And to always lead with your heart, because that's what matters most. And so through their inspiration, it fueled me to start a passion project here in Rochester called Sriracha Says, a food and drink blog that would help others fall in love with the city and would highlight others and shine a positive light in Rochester. And so thus began my creative journey. But I want to sit on that word creative for a second. What does it really mean to be creative? I always thought of being creative in the more traditional sense, tied to theater, tied to music, tied to the arts. And yeah, growing up, I played a small role in the fourth grade production of Beauty and the Beast. I still know all the words. And I uh, played the trumpet all throughout middle school, which I actually found in my parents' basement last Christmas. Let's just say they were not impressed. So it's safe to say that I'm pretty sure I didn't excel in either of those areas. And with the blog, it was the first time in my life where I actually started to explore that word creativity. But with that creative process, as I embarked on it, I started to experience the highs and the lows of it, not only having the struggle to identify with that word creative, but also the journey itself. And to be truthful, the struggle is real, my friends. So it's real in the sense that if we think about the world that we live in today, it's a very noisy, cluttered, saturated world with so many different mediums. You've got social media, you've got new brands, new businesses, new websites and blogs starting new every single day. And one of my biggest fears when I started this blog is, how am I gonna stand out? Who is going to listen to me? And how are they going to hear me? I'm just this little Vietnamese girl posting pictures of food, hoping that people like it. And so I was worried that I wasn't going to measure up, that my work wasn't going to be good enough compared to others. And I started feeling this fear in my head and this inner self-critic asking myself, am I really going to be good enough? And that fear only intensified when I thought about the highlight reel. The highlight reel, for those of you who know social media, it happens all the time. You think of social media and you think of the snippets of everyone's life that they share, the most positive aspects. When it's the dead of winter, they're on this luxurious trip to the Cayman Islands or they just got that big promotion when you just lost your job. And so it can be difficult, and you start to feel inadequate and discouraged in your process because you start to compare your path with others. And so I fell victim to this highlight reel and started comparing myself to others and feeling like seeing their business bloom and why am I feeling so left behind? But that highlight reel can be deceptive. It only shows the finished product, the masterpiece. So you see this presentation today. What you don't see is the behind the scenes where I'm changing the font 50 million times so that you guys will like it. Or that I'm doing the ugly cry in the bathroom when I'm in a creative funk and I'm feeling uninspired. You don't see the unglamorous behind the scenes and you don't see the battleground in my head where I'm feeling like I'm not gonna be good enough to share with the world. So I wanna share with you guys four ways that I've been able to overcome that feeling of not being good enough. The first one is stop comparing yourself to the hustle reel, or to the highlight reel. 
So as I said before, when you compare your behind the scenes to the highlight reel, you're basically comparing the worst of you to the best of everyone else. So what did I do? I disconnected, I'd go for a hike, and I'd meditate with myself and remember to just take pictures for fun, to feel alive in that moment, and to remember that my path doesn't have to be the same as everyone else's. Number two is focus on what matters. Focus on what makes you excited. Why did you start this project in the first place? I started to think about different sources of information or inspiration and think about ways to get excited again and so that it wouldn't be so distracted by what everyone else was doing. Number three is find your creative circle. So I learned the hard way. I bottled up a lot of feelings inside and I, I started to talk to other people. I started to understand they're doing the ugly cry too. And so I didn't feel so much alone and we could share our vulnerabilities, we could share our ideas, and we could really learn from each other and leverage off this inspiration and the support system. And number four is my favorite, it's own your voice. And I think your story, your voice, is the most powerful weapon that you have in this world. It's gonna be the key to how you're gonna break through this noisy, differentiated, cluttered world. And so that was the key for me to always stay true to who I am. So these ways have helped me tremendously. I think about the person who I was two years ago to the person that I am today, and I'm a much more self-aware, confident, and stronger version of myself. I think about that word creative, and while I may not be the leading lady in Beauty and the Beast, or I might not be a professional trumpet player, I'm many different things, and creative can take on many different meanings. It can mean I'm an optimist, I'm an encourager, a dreamer, a foodie, a blogger, and even creative. But the most important description that I wanna leave you guys with today is that I'm enough. That today, standing right here, I don't need to feel like I'm on the same path as everyone else. That I don't need a standing ovation from you guys, although a few claps would be appreciated. <laughs> I don't need a million likes on Instagram to feel validated. I just need to know that the moment that I have right now, that I'm content in it. And what I need to know is that I'm going to dream big, I'm gonna trust in every experience, and I'm always going to lead with my heart. And being right here, right now, I know that it's exactly where I'm supposed to be. And that's enough for me. Thank you guys so much.